Back Arrow is a show directed by Goro Taniguchi, the director of Code Geass, and if you look at the show for more than 5 minutes you'll probably be able to tell. The plot's about as convoluted if not more, and the characters are designed to look ridiculous in our semi-serious and mysterious adventure world. The series takes place in Lingaland, a world enclosed by massive walls so large that the people within don't know that the outside world is overrun by tights- oh no wait, that's actually a different show. In this one we don't know what's outside the wall. In fact, the people in Lingaland, despite being part of one of two large warring nations, generally all share the idea that there is no outside world and that their flat earth within the Antarctic walls is all there is. They are provided with weapons of mass destruction by an unknown god of the walls that Fortnite drops them into the world so they can fight for control over them. The weapons seem to always take the form of mechs so that this can be a mech fighting anime, unlike Code Geass. One day though, in some shithole town where everybody including the local scientist dresses like a cowboy, the battle bus drops a loot box that holds a mysterious man who likes to show off his peen and exclaim that he's from <gasps> the outside world. He's then greeted by jeers of faithful citizens who tell him to get the fuck out because there is no outside world. This is a common theme in the first two episodes, where many of the characters make no attempt at critical thinking and instead scream in high-pitched voices unprompted that the main guy, dubbed Back Arrow since he forgot who he is save for his desire to go to the wall, is a fucking idiot who doesn't know anything about the world. Anyway, I can't honestly say I know which country is which in this series, there's a lot of special vocabulary thrown around and I don't really give much of a shit about it. On top of that, a lot of the characters quickly show the decision making priorities are all fucked up. When Back Arrow lands in town, a military guy comes to take the weapons from the drop only to be fought by some teenage girl who thinks she's the sheriff. When given the opportunity to de-escalate the situation and just hand over a weapon to the guy so the sheriff girl doesn't get murdered, Bat Girl instead decides to fight more because the sheriff girl gave him a thong to wear to cover his massive schlong. But it's no ordinary thong, you see. It's the thong of her dead sheriff father, so he views this as a special sacrifice worth potentially killing them both over to protect their pride rather than just keep them both safe and let the military guy leave. Well, he wins the fight, and everybody's shocked to discover that Back Arrow is capable of beating people in robot fights without mortally injuring them. So the peaceful princess later says she wants to meet him, while a scientist also says he'll help Back Arrow to get to the wall. In the meantime, the village is again attacked, while more bumpkins manage to find robot wristbands in the seemingly endless supply from the same drop they found days ago and resist the military themselves. The military guys this time are looking for Back Arrow so they can bring him to the princess, but when they can't find him immediately, they're told to raise the village and kill every man, woman, and child for the glory of whatever country this is, I'm not going back to check. While I can't really stand how there isn't a single person in the show that makes any decisions that aren't completely insane, I guess I'm curious where it's going. It's not doing a great job of getting me invested in the mystery of the world, but it definitely feels like Code Geass' psychotic brother, which is saying something since Code Geass is already pretty wacky. There's warring states, special words for robot wars, and instead of Geass, a lot of the mech drivers talk about extremely vague concepts of individual conviction that somehow translates into their ability to use the weapons. Of course, Batgirl proudly exclaims that he has no convictions making him more epic than the other losers who make up some off-handed excuse to fight. I might keep an eye on this one just to see where the plot takes us and if some interesting developments arise out of that mystery, but I can't say I'm gripped by it like I might be by other series with similar elements of uncertainty. I guess the mechs might be kinda cool if you're into that, but you'll have to sit through some pretty nonsensical dialogue to find out.